squad gone. <laughs> ah! Getting it. I'm getting close. Yeah. I gotta. <coughs> YouTube, I gotta turn my head backwards. Keep up with the cool folks over here. <laughs> Alright. Well, go on, viewers and subscribers. Welcome to another wonderful episode of the Bourbon Jamaican. Today we got Brady the Great and Drop In Newts, capital D, capital N for Newts. And we got something out of Brady's archives. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's all archives and you got hundreds. I guess it would be a selection, not archives. Well, the Brady <laughs> selection. The he vault. Don't, he, don't, he don't have uh, dust on his bottle. I don't, have a, I don't have a collection. Tim uh, things are, they, they shining. So today we're going to be reviewing the Prideful Goat. Uh, this brand was is part owned by Brandy Sullivan from Bourbon Real Talk. If you guys have never watched his channel, you should check him out. Shout out to Real Talk. <laughs> uh, so we have the six year cash strength rye. It's a 95.5 rye from MGP. It's 65 bucks. Then we have the new eight year. It is 95.5 rye from MGP. It's 95 bucks. And then we have the rum finish rye, which is the six year cash strength finish for I think it's four or six months in Jamaican rum barrels. Yeah, man. And it's 80 bucks. I'm excited on that one. Um, stand tall, stand proud. And then baby. we'll talk more about these as we go through. All right, so well, my first uh, my first experience with the Prideful Goat, uh, me and Brady, uh, we attended a, a patio pour at the Party Source in Northern Kentucky. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, Brady and I didn't have any luck that day, but another one of our buddies, he, uh, he actually got to purchase a Rock Hills Farm as a raffle winner of that event. And um, once the event was over, I kind of stood around and, and you know, made a couple of different connections trying to network for the channel here. And uh, so uh, shout out to Kendall Ferris. He was, uh, he was one of the guys that was uh, doing a tasting while we were there. And uh, as everybody kind of dispersed from the event, me and him kind of got to talking. And uh, next thing you know, he said, I'll be right back, fellas. And about that time, Brady walked up. And next thing you know, he brought out the Prideful Goat A year. And uh, so here we are today, uh, based off of uh, Kendall's Kendall's uh, recommendation that that particular day. Brady, he already had a couple of them, and uh, he was uh, anxious anxiously awaiting this A year. So yeah. I've never tried any of them, so I'm pretty excited, and I'm also pretty excited about the rum finish. <laughs> Seeing that it's the bourbon Jamaican and it's Jamaican rum barrel finish. I'm here if it's the uh, Appleton Estate barrels, which Appleton Estate is super delicious. You can see I got a couple bottles of those around here somewhere. We got to try several different Prideful Ghosts that day, and I can tell you whether I was drunk or not, I don't know, but they were tasting quite delicious that particular day. All right, well, where, so where are we starting from, left to right? We'll start with the left glass. So this is going to be the six-year cash strength. Uh, this one is 118.4 proof it's batch four so this is a shelf product this is going to be the shelf stable product for his brand he also has a six-year bourbon that has a green label instead of a yellow kindle let us try that also fantastic it tasted it tasted to me like an elijah craig barrel proof and it was only six years and it was really good the glass on his right yes it is, it is very high rye. i can taste the rye right it is 95 percent rye I get dill on the nose, but what I like about it is I don't ever taste it. Uh, you get 100% which one, rye. Which one did we taste that day that he said that we probably would never taste again? That's the rum one. The rum one? Yep, so we'll talk about that more when we get to it. What I, what I love about this, I've never gotten it on, on anything else ever. It tastes to me like sweet tea. Yeah, I can see, but I'm, I'm tasting all <laughs> rye for me. I get like a baking spice up front from a normal rye, and then I get this herbal like tea note, and then I get like a heavy honey and brown sugar note. I get the honey. And that's why it kind of reminds me of a sweet tea, but man, it's a long finish. You ever drink vodka and sweet tea? Yeah, sweet tea, vodka. Firefly. Firefly, yeah. yeah. Not saying that I get vodka with this <laughs> at all. You get that sweet tea vodka. But yeah, the, I, I, was, I get the honey more than anything out of, yeah, out of all the, the flavor honey. notes. Absolutely. It's it's solid. For 65 bucks for a 60 year cash strength MGP, 
I think it's a pretty decent deal. But like you said, Sheldon, you got to be good with a lot of spice. Yeah. I mean, it hits you. So next we'll go to the eight year. <coughs> Same mash bill, still MGP. This one is 122 proof. It's batch two. Coming in hot. <laughs> um, this one is limited release. I don't know how many batches they made in total, um, but the only reason they call them bat they're, they're listed as batch numbers is because in one of the episodes of Bourbon Real Talk, Randy was talking about how their blending take tank isn't large enough to hold like hundreds and thousands of barrels. It holds a limited number, so they have to blend it over and over and make sure it's the same every time and label them as different batches. So the proofs will vary. Now this one. I immediately get oak on the nose. I get the oak, but I'm getting a lot of molasses. It's very sweet, desserty kind. I'm getting a lot of, probably a hint of honey too almost, but it's very, it's on the sweeter side, which I like. And the uh, I get a citrus on the back end. You don't get it's not. Like it orange. doesn't drink the proof. It's not as hot. No, it drinks lower proof than the six year. Yeah. Take note, guys out there in YouTube. The Jamaica's palate is growing. <laughs> um, you know, he uses the word puffery in here. <laughs> I just love that word. <laughs> I love the word puffery. <laughs> The eight years since it's limited, it didn't go everywhere. I didn't even see this on the shelf. I had to buy it off Sealbox. Um, Sealbox took forever to ship it to my house. That's why the guys <laughs> were laughing and saying Brady's been waiting on this one for a while. Um, but I, I like it a lot. Yeah, it's dangerous. It is. Uh, you know, you're a couple pours into that thing, and next thing you know, you you asking for help to go to bed. <laughs> We buy and remodel in your whole bathroom before you know it. Shout out Mama Brady. <laughs> so then glass three is the six year shelf bottle and that's cash strength. They took that cash strength six year and finished it in, oh I'm sorry, Caribbean rum. It's most likely from. Caribbean rum can mean a lot of things. We're talking about yes. Bermuda, oh, Jamaica, yeah. Bahamas. It's probably. <laughs> Ooh, I wanna take you to the Cocama. But um, what you were talking about, Chris? So Kendall brought it up when we were talking to him at the event. Randy mentioned it, <laughs> like basically made almost an entire video about it. When they bought these rum barrels, I'm pretty sure he said they were Jamaican in the video. That's why I say that. He said that they bought them, they made sure they were still wet, not too dried out, started filling them with rye. And he said that when the, he was getting shipped samples to taste it, because they weren't aging it in Texas where he lives, he said a lot, he said a lot of the samples tasted nasty. And he was like, what the hell? So they shipped a lot of the barrels down to Texas, and he said the, that the majority of them were rotten. What? The barrels. Wow. So he said that they had to like hand pick, they had to taste every barrel and hand pick the good ones and blend them. And he said between the cost of, of importing the barrels, aging them in the barrels, and then that whiskey not being drinkable and having to throw it away, he said it's not worth the effort or the cost. So he'll never do it again. So how much is that bottle? That one was 80. Um, but he did it because his wife's favorite whiskey is Angel's MV Rye Rum Finish. So it was like a tribute to his rock. To Fun his fact, boy. that's not one of our favorite Angel Envies for <laughs> no, you YouTube no, people out there. No, it is not. <laughs> the, the nose is really sweet. It is delicious. I like that texture because you get the, the rye, but you can also taste a little bit of that rum, that spice. So it's like double spice. You get the rye spice plus the rum spice. When I smell it, I get like a like a crushed red pepper on so the going nose. into going into it was it was it the rum finish that you weren't sure that you were gonna like or was it this one I before we tasted them with Kendall yeah the rum yeah that's uh because I couldn't I couldn't remember but I remember you saying you know I don't I don't typically like the rum finish so blah 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 and it was like well let me put you on I'll be right back <laughs> he went back to the car three separate times folks he was, <laughs> a, he, was a, he was a great great dude to run into and, and we're uh, we're blessed to, to come across kind of fun loving dude and um, yeah. we appreciate all the love you showed us that day well, I, can, 
I'll tell you what, that rum finish, it almost has a lot of coffee bean. It's almost like yes. coffee. I'm tasting like coffee beans almost. I agree. It doesn't that. drink to the proof at all. Like no, it's no. another dangerous bottle that that if you are if you are a rum rum kind of person out there, you're not hip to the bourbon or like the bourbon, like this is this is one of them bottles that you put your people on but unfortunately like you said the import of, of the barrels was just so outlandish like it's it's hard to come across so you know the fact that he said that particular day we probably wouldn't come across and brady has a bottle obviously we're lucky enough to uh continue it to enjoy that that spirit but it's a good crossover what's crazy about that rum rye though is that you can barely tell it's a rye Right. Like drinking these, the first two, and then going to it, the rye characteristics are slightly there, but it complements it. Yeah, you definitely get a rum finish. Yes. It's more rum than rye to me, but you get the rye on the, on the back end. You get yeah. that like slight citrus baking spice note where up front, <clears throat> excuse me, I get slapped with like pepper and molasses and uh um well what was coffee, the other coffee, coffee, coffee yes coffee beans. those are the first three things i get and then it slowly fades into the rye yeah. which is really interesting it's yeah it's very flavorful because it, it kind of lingers so the initial sip you get there like a quick burn and then as you swallow you just everything just kind of just mellows out so all of the different parts of your tongue you're getting all different kind of taste tantalization or tantalization i should say and you get you get all of it all at once but then you just get that nice rum finish it gives you a little bit of warm hug but it's not like overpowering yeah so it's just it's it's perfect it's a little smoky as well on the second yeah that's what i was going to get at it's a little smoky char to it yeah but you think that's that that's coming from that texas heat or what yeah so this because this, that, this, was, that was ended up being finished in Texas. Right. They spent the last, I think the entirety, almost the entirety of the rum finish was in Texas. I think it only spent like one or two months in Indiana, and then they spent like four or six months in Texas. That's a very good point because any anything like Still Austin or uh, Milam and Green, that kind of stuff, the Texas whiskeys, I always get like a campfire. Note. Right. Not peated, but like almost peated. And what's crazy is that's one sixteen proof. Yeah, it doesn't drink to it. Like as I, honestly, whether my palate's acclimated or not, it, it it almost drinks like a bottle of bond. So it's very welcoming. Yeah, yes. like it's a it's a good thing to put your friends on to. Unfortunately, you know we don't know if it's going to be a staple of the price for good or not. You just gonna have to you know spend that money, bourbon, real tough. <laughs> but uh. Luckily, all three of these are still available on Sealbox for now. I would imagine the rum finished rye is probably running low since it's been available for about two months now, and they said this was like a one and done kind of thing. Um, I don't know about you guys, the eight year to me is the best of the three. I, if you don't own, if you really like spicy rye, and you don't own the eight year, that's what yeah. I would buy one. If you want the rye to come in this. Boom, the sucker punch you, that's definitely, but. Where are you, where are you placing that in your top? As far as rise? Rise? Yeah. Not top three. No. We, we might I'm have curious. to bond it. We might have to bond it because to me. How about we, we each bring our top favorite rise? Hang on, they, hang on. The there. Mictor's toasted rye you can't include because it's toasted. <laughs> I, I understand I can't bring it. Hold on, see, so I think y'all are trying to open that Parker's hair. Come on, <laughs> Parker's rye, the Jack Daniels rye, barrel proof rye. You put the Jack Daniels up there? Yes, the old Overholt 10 year rye. And um, I know there's one more I'm missing. Will old, old Forrester, Old Forrester barrel strength rye. I think those four are probably my top four. And then this one and Old Ezra 7 sit I'll, at number five. I'll throw that Willis four year rye in there. I'm That's sure gonna you lose. Will. You think so? Oh, easily. Parkers. They're not throwing the Parkers in there. They're they're pulling my leg right. Come on, stand tall and stand proud. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, I hope you all enjoy this wonderful time with us. Again, Brady, thank you for bringing these. Shout these out Kendall. Shout out Party Source. We appreciate you guys. 
Uh, if you made it this far in the video, just so y'all know, uh, for all you Northern Kentucky, Kentucky, Ohioans, all you people out there that's uh, trying to get into the Party Source raffle, it is not a scam. Your boy won a Barrel Proof EH Taylor this week, and I go pick it up tomorrow, and I couldn't be more excited about it. Absolutely. But if you are new to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Drop something in the comments. Tell us where you're watching from. Tell us what your thoughts are if you've had either one of these. And we look forward to bringing you more good stuff. Of course, drop it nukes, capital D, capital N, Brady the Great. Thanks for watching. <laughs> and let us know what your guys' top three rides would be. Yeah, I'm curious as well. Let us know what you think that we should put up this project. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think we should put the GOAT up against? You know what I mean? They can't call it the GOAT without it competing. So let us know. <laughs> <laughs>